Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's all stand. We're going to go before the Lord. Welcome to the Church of Jesus Christ Conference, or Convocation, here in Portage. Uh, I was get, been aiming to ask Sister Paula. She's always the one that's got a good memory and how many exactly how many years we've been having conference. So you can figure that out for me here in the next little bit. Amen. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for letting us be here. For the many blessings, Lord, you bestowed upon us. We ask you, Lord, just look down from heaven. Bless each and every soul, God, every need, situation. Lord, we know it's all in your hands. We praise you, God. Lord, your will be done in everything. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Sister's going to come and lead us in a couple of songs. We appreciate uh, some of the good riches being here already from Michigan. <clears throat> now, we've got some others coming, uh, visitors and all. Some will be here by tonight, I think, the service tonight. They'll be here, some of them. The others, maybe probably tomorrow. But usually the first day, it's kind of slow getting started. But let's enjoy it while we can. Can you say amen? All right. Everybody sing. Praise the Lord, sis. She was just raring to go this morning. I'm excited. It's weird that it's finally here, but I'm still excited. And I'm also thankful that this is my first convocation with full of the Holy Ghost. So I thank the Lord for that. Now we're going to sing page 163, I've Got More to Go to Heaven For. A flat. I've been on my way to heaven. For a long, long time And many things have happened That's clouded up my mind But I am more determined To walk the narrow way I've got more to go to heaven for Than I had yesterday There's a golden street to walk upon A bell Page 294, everybody will be happy over there. B flat. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond, where the saved of earth shall soon the glory share, where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there.
nobody praying and no mourning in that land for no burdens there will be for us to bear all the people will be singing glory glory to the lamb everybody will be happy over happy over there I was I've said some things here lately uh, it's hard to find people today see Mike it's happy everybody's got problems and everybody's down and out but church we cannot let that happen to us amen our our life is promised it's guaranteed amen and God's coming back for us amen and taking us to a place where all our problems are going to be over. All you and I got to worry about is staying right and staying ready so that when he comes, our problems will be over. And some people might think, well, what about all the other? Well, their problems that they have now is nothing compared to what their problem is going to be once the church is out of here. So just want to say we thank the Lord for all of you, mostly our church today, but most of them will be coming in. I would think tonight some, and then tomorrow there'll be quite a few more, I think. If, if they all come, they said they were coming. But uh, until they get here, amen, we can have a, a good time in Jesus Christ. Good to see Brother Pete, Sister Tammy with us, amen. Uh, I thank God for them, and uh, I'm going to have him come up first. He'll probably get twice because nobody's here. Hey, they'll have to, I'll have to let him up again so everybody can hear him, amen. Brother Pete, come on up. Testify, sing a song or something, amen. Maybe just testify, huh? All right. I told Tammy, I said on the way up, I said, well, ain't nobody here from Dyersburg, me and you. And I said, if they want somebody to sing, you're it. <laughs> <laughs> then she turned real white. <laughs> and uh, so all I know is, is uh, if, if, we, if you want to hear somebody from Dyersburg sing, come to Dyersburg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, I do sing but when I'm all alone in the car but uh, I, I, I wished I I wished I I mean let me say this I think anybody can sing they may not sing good <laughs> that's, that's, that's me but but uh, but anyway God's good I sure am thankful to be here one more time here in uh, Portage, and uh, thankful for, you know, I, I was looking, you always look, when I go to a different place, I always something I'm looking for, when I look on the building, there's a name up there. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I look for. God's coming back after a people. That's called by his name. You know, this, this, this building's going to stay, it ain't going to heaven. <laughs> but this is where he said go. He said, this is where we're going to you know, if you look over and I get them mixed up, it might, it's either Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, or it's in Chronicles. But he said, there shall you eat before the Lord. <laughs> now, he ain't talking about cheeseburgers, and he ain't talking about that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. Right. You're not going to get what you hear here nowhere else. 
You're not going. You're not going. Well, I always, I always have a message before I come. I may not get to use it, and that's fine. My prayer is, I've, I told the church, if I come up here and they don't ask me to sweep the floor, I don't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I, I prayed before I come. Whoever's got the message, let them preach. But I, 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 I'm gonna spill the beans. What I did have is on repentance. It's a dying message. Yes. Yes, it is. Believe it or not, it's yes. dying in the church. My God. That's a scary thing. Yes. Repentance, it's still relevant today. There's a lot of places this there's a lot of places that do I'm talking about churches. Well, I remember Bishop Perry, he said, Don't you <laughs> Boy, Bishop Perry was tough. <laughs> he said, Don't you call them no church. Well, he's true. He's right. To be a church, it's got to be called by his name. But <laughs> there's a lot of places that don't teach repentance. They teach come. As, there's, a, there's a place in Dyersburg. It's a new place. And the name of it's a church without walls. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It ain't, they got walls. <laughs> they, ain't got, they ain't got no rules. It's come as you are. Live as you are. God loves you just the way you. And I'm going to tell you something. I ain't, God does love you. Yeah. I don't care what you, how big a sinner you are. God still loves you. But there's conditions. <laughs> there are conditions. Heaven. There's a condition for us to make it. He loves us. I remember one time in reading in the Bible, there was a man at a wedding. <laughs> he, he, he called that man friend. I don't have any friends I don't like, or I wouldn't call them no friend. <laughs> That's pretty simple, ain't it? I mean, even I can figure that out. The Lord had to love him to call him friend. But keep on reading, he threw him out in the outer darkness. Repentance is still relevant. God loves love us. He, he came and bled and died for us. That's right. yes, he did. Went away and built a place where he was already mentioned. A uh, place yeah. where there are no more problems, no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow. Amen. All the former things will be passed away. Passed away but he, he, he created that for a people yeah. that obey him. I said, I, said it, I said it last week. Read and get your Bible. Do me a favor and look something up. Look up in there where anybody ever disobeyed God. God bless them. Let me save you some time. It ain't in there. God don't bless disobedience. Not one place. Jonah, he told him to go down to Nineveh. Well, he didn't go. Did God bless him? Well, Jonah, you tried. <laughs> no. You know, I, I hear that people that saying, well, God knows my heart. I wish people could under, get to understand of that. That's the that's most scary thing there is. God does know your heart. <laughs> that's a scary thing. God knows. That, that's a scary. God knows whether I really love him. Whether I really serve him, whether I'm in this for him or for other reasons. But I, I'm thankful to be here. To play. This place is called by his name. Yes. But repentance is a dying thing. Not only that, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things. I think about the Lord's Supper and foot washing. Now, I'm going to be honest. I said this before when I first came to the church. I never heard that in my life. Well, there's a lot of people. I mean, well, guess what? It ain't taught. Right. I remember talking to a man one time. He was sick. The man been going to church for 20 years or longer. I said, well, have you been anointed with oil? He said, what's that? What's that? Well, it lets me know their, their church don't teach that. <laughs> or he would have at least heard of it. There's a, lot, there's a lot of things that's a dying. 
You know, the Bible does declare over <laughs> in James 5th chapter, I think it is. If you're sick, call upon the elders. That's the, it's in there, but it's not taught. Lord's Supper foot washing, it's in there, but it's not taught. I've had, I've had a bunch of people tell me I am not <laughs> washing somebody else's foot. Well, Peter said the same thing. <laughs> had no part. I don't want to take up no time. Too much time. But we ain't got many people here, so <laughs> we got more time. Hey, I, I was talking to Bishop Spence. I remember back a few years ago, probably 10, 15, about 15 years ago at least, when you come to convocation, you better get here early yeah. and get you a seat. Yes. Because if not, you're going to be sitting in a hard folding chair. Or you're going to be standing. <laughs> there's, there's witnesses here tell you. It used to be so hot in here. My God turned the air up. And it was up. <laughs> you know why? Because it was too many people in here. Look around. Look at, look at us now. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. I'd rather have quality than I had quantity. <laughs> That's the days that we're living in. That's the world we live in, brother. He's coming back after a few. He's coming back after a few of those who made yourself ready. The multitude ain't going. It's just a few. And I'm gonna tell you something. I think he's. I think he's. Well, I, there's a lot of slogans you can use, but shaking the tree, <laughs> seeing who's gonna hold on, who's gonna fall out. There's been a lot to fall out. There's been, there's been people in here to fall out that I didn't think would fall out. Yeah. Right. Well, but if we don't keep certain things alive in the church, it's going gonna, it's gonna to die. It's going to be gone. Be gone. We see it all around us. People are so worried about living close to the world. You know, I, I'm just, I, I didn't come here to preach no standards or nothing like that, but I will tell you something. If a woman's skirt should be down to here, if the absolute minimum is here, wear an inch longer. Yeah. <laughs> People want to live as close as they can. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm, not, I'm picking on women. I ain't going to pick on women. Hey, I've said this before. If a man's pants is so tight you can see if that quarter in his pocket's on heads or tails, <laughs> it was too tight. <laughs> I know that's bad, but <laughs> hey, it's true. I don't want to take up no more time, but it's good to be here. Good to see everybody. We don't get to see each other enough. You know, ever since COVID happened, it's even slowed down even more. But but I wish, and, and work gets in the way of everything. <laughs> but I wish I could be here. But I wish I could go, go more places. But I, but the way it is, I can't. But we don't get to see each other as much. I'm thankful, you know, we got YouTube and right. Facebook and stuff like that. Now, Facebook can be a problem, but it can be a good asset, too, if you use it right. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, I'm thankful to be here. Thankful for Mr. Spence and, and all the church here. That I know they... they Done a lot of work to get ready, so I'm thankful for that. Anyway, God's good. You know, he uh, he was talking about Bishop Perry and different things, and he was he'd tell you like it was. And I he was saying something there, and I thought of a message he preached many years ago. We've never forgotten about living too close to the border of Egypt. He talking how people want to live just as close as they can to the world. And I wish I had that, if anybody has that message on tape, I, I'd sure like to get a hold of that. Uh, you know, and he was right. He was right on the money with that. You know, people, here's the church. There's Egypt. Instead of living over here, they're right over there on the edge. And like he said, all it's going to take is one more step, and they're out of the church. Don't be living like that. Live over there in Canaan land, so to speak. Live over there where you got some, you got some help, some safety. Too many people, and I got to thinking too. Uh, some things he said.
Too many people today, that instead of looking for truth, the word, they're just looking for a good time. It's killing a lot of churches. Just want to have a good time. They want to get together and let's have church. <laughs> well, how can you have church if the word's not being preached? The pulpit's not straightened up. Singing don't make you have church. Loud music. They're not going to do it. But today all they want to do is have a good time. And the more you scream and holler, and I'm not against worshiping God, but man, that's, that's it. That's not it. It's the word. I brought a message you're not too long. We'll get into it. But if it ain't written, it ain't going to help you. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to have some songs, some singing. And I appreciate all of you. I know it's kind of low this morning, but it's always like that on the first day of conference. There's not a lot of people usually show up because they're, they're traveling and different things. They got in late and they're resting. But I'm sure we'll have more here tonight. Say amen. So uh, thank the Lord. All right. Who's going to sing for us? Well, where is all them amens? One, one finger pointing to Katie. Can you all sing this morning? All right, come on up. I've had some bad days And I've had hills to climb
that say amen. amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. The true, genuine Holy Ghost. You and I are living in a world today, a society that countless number of people are claiming to have the Holy Ghost. But, as we say millions of times or thousands of times, the Bible teaches us you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. You can claim to have the Holy Ghost, but if your fruit is bearing something else, that lets us, we don't have to say anything, the fruit, the fruit that you bear tells the whole story. What is your fruit telling about you? What is your everyday walk in this world? What is it saying to people? The way you dress every day when you're out. <laughs> That's men and women. It's, it's talking to people. Amen. Your attitude. <laughs> the people you associate with. Getting quiet. That all speaks for us. Amen? I'm going to hang around every day with somebody that's high on drugs and don't know where they're at, and I'm with them every day, and we're doing this together. And people are going to wonder, what's going on with Randall or Jerry? What's, I don't understand that. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. We're here to learn a little bit here and there and get a few seeds here and seeds there. In fact, if I get a chance to teach... During this conference, we're going to be talking about seeds. Amen. There's all, so much in that Bible about seeds. Amen. What is your seed bearing? How does people... The Bible says we're, we're written epistles, known and read by all men. So what are people reading from you? You may not be hanging around... And, uh, a drunk or a alcoholic, which I'm not running them down, they, they can be saved just like anybody else. But when a saint of God, supposed to be a saint of God, hangs around them more than they do anything else, seem like, associate with them, people wonder. Well, I'm not going to get into all this, but I'll throw this out there. Amen. What if you're hanging around them that's not in the truth? Every day, associating with them. Now, I don't mean be good to them, be polite. We all do that. But when that's, that's who you associate with all the time, you hang around with all the time, you're seen with all the time. People are reading us. The Bible said it, it's written. We are written epistles, known and read of all men. I got to watch who I linger around all the time. Now, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. I wasn't intending to say all that this morning, but it's the truth. We have to set a standard. We have to be a light to other people. Because some weak ones will see you and think, well, if they can do that, I can do that. Amen. Who's going to sing next? JJ? Can you sing? All right, brother. Thank the Lord. Everybody say amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Worship the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glad God's allowed me to be at another one. Yeah. You know, different things have happened over the years. And it goes along with the song I'm going to sing. Uh, I've only sang it one other time. And I really love this song, but many people have turned away from God. They've walked away. As Brother Pete mentioned, you know, we used to have crowds here and in August it'll be 19 years since I started coming to the church you know I can't say that I served God for 19 years 
some portion of that I have, but I'm thankful that he had mercy on me. Uh, this morning I was saying about my testimony, and you know, Sister Marilyn used to sing a song all the time, My God is Real. He's real in my soul. And part of, part of my testimony is, I know that my God is real. He's real in my soul still. This song is part of my testimony too, that I'm way too close to turn and go back now. And sing along with me if you know this song, and if you don't, you can learn it while I'm singing it. I've been tired and I've been weary. I've been foot sore all my journey, but I could truly say God has never let me down. There's been days when clouds hung dreary. Many times my friends weren't cheery, but I've come too far to turn and go back now. I am one day closer home than I've ever been before. In my heart I have a longing, I gotta walk on heaven's shore. In my soul I feel the glory of this brand new peace I've found. And I'm way too close to turn and go back now. I've been tempted and I've been tested. My progress seemed arrested, but I could truly say God has never let me down. In the battle I've retreated, but I've never been defeated. And I'm way too close to turn and go back now. I am one day closer home than I've ever been before. In my heart I have a longing, I gotta walk on heaven's shore. In my soul I feel the glory of this brand new peace I found. And I'm way too close to turn and go back now. I've been tempted and I've been tested. My progress seemed arrested, but I could truly say God has never let me down. In the battle I've retreated, but I've never been defeated, and I'm way too close to turn, go back now. I am one day closer home than I've ever been before. In my heart I have a longing, gotta walk on heaven's shore in my soul i feel the glory of this brand new peace i found and i'm way too close to turn go back now yes i'm way too close to turn go back now You know, it's so true. We're one day closer. Every day that you and I get up, we're a little closer. Amen. To this world ending. God taking his church out of here. Every day, we're just a little closer. Church, that ought to encourage us. That ought to stir us a little bit. To where we start looking at ourselves, Lord, help me. Is there anything I need to change? Is there something I need to work on? Because church, the Bible describes it so clear. He said in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, my God, that's fast. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together to meet him in the air. In a moment, a twinkling of an eye, you're not going to have time to repent. You're not going to have time to find a church. Preacher, no time to get baptized. It's over. We've got to live like we understand that, and that we know that, and not let things and people draw us off into things. I've never seen anything like it today in my life. People you thought would never go back on God. We've talked about that some this morning. You just never dreamed it. But where are they at today? That's why the Bible says, now listen, the scripture said, unless he shortens the time, there be no flesh saved. Now, I hate to admit this or say this, but 
that speaks to me. Right. Unless he shortens the time, there will be no flesh saved. That would be me too. Amen. This world, church, is getting worse and worse. We could probably safely say, you know, some people say, oh, I'll never leave the Lord. Well, if he don't shorten the time, you will. <laughs> So don't, don't get that in your mind. I'm ready anytime. Make sure. My God. Can we say amen? amen. Sister Janie, you feel like singing for us this morning. We're so glad that she's here with us today. and We appreciate her. Thank God for her. I know she's been through a lot uh, lately. But if you can, come up and sing for us this morning. Praise the Lord. Sister Janie, come out up. We're still praying for you, sis. I thank God he's so good. He is so good. Thank you. I like to sing about my brand new home. And fortunately, Don got a chance to get a little bit head start on me. But praise the Lord, I'm glad for that. Because he's in a place, no pain, no suffering, only warmth and peace. Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. <clears throat> a. If you're awed by this world and all this, But without great wealth, I know I'll never own one. And you will neither if you're no more rich than me. But if your soul will look beyond what man is building, you can see what earth.
bless her God. You know, we can think about heaven and think about them streets of gold or the tree of life and the river and all that, but I don't think it's going to be, we can't even imagine till we see it. Just wait till you see it. My Lord. <laughs> How many are looking forward to that? Amen. I'm looking forward. I want to see it, Brother Pete. It's there. Amen. It may not be one I've got built up in my mind, but it's going to be there. <laughs> I think it's going to be a whole lot better than what I can imagine. But we've got to make it in order to see it. Thank the Lord. Just wait till you see. Amen. Amen. We'll probably hear from them again, but I'm going to ask the group. You still call the group? I've been telling them for years they need to get some kind of name for the group, but they like the group, I guess. So we'll hear from them again during this conference, probably a couple times. We're proud of them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I uh, left the group book in the car because we had to take our books. That's why I leave my binders here. But um, we're going to sing uh, one that we know really well, and it, it's, a, it's a good one, you know. And I, I, uh, I used to sing it. My dad used to sing it. Now Maddie sings it. And um, it's got a good meaning behind it, you know. <laughs> I'd, like to th I'd like to be perfect, but I'm not. And I don't think anybody is perfect. And there was a perfect man, and they crucified him. But... I don't want to outright sin either, you know, because the, um, the song talks about, there's a scripture actually in the Bible that says that you, you crucify him anew, and I don't, I don't want to do that. And I'm thankful that God has mercy on us, and I, I hope that the meaning of the song comes across. They say that Jesus died for my transgression. There's just one thing I really want to Treat his precious grace so carelessly. Oh, but each time he forgives, what if he relives the agony he felt on that? It seems that I'm so good at breaking promises When I treat His precious grace so carelessly Oh, but each time He forgives What if He relives the agony
He's a holy God. Amen. Amen. That's what he said. And then he told us to be holy. Of course, we can never match him, but we can do our best. Amen. While we're down here, church, to live a life for the Lord. We miss Brother Gerald. Uh, I'm so used to looking over and seeing him there. and uh, Ever since he got in the church here not too long ago and, and got the Holy Ghost, he's been faithful about coming and testifying. I, I miss that. But it won't be long. Brother Gerald will be back in here with us. Thank the Lord. Worshiping and praising the Lord. Can we all say amen? amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Can you give us a song, Brother Darrell? We can ask Brother Darrell to give us a song and maybe he can testify for us. Hey, somebody else testify while they're getting ready. Amen. We can all get familiar with one another and we come back tonight. Hopefully some more will be coming in out of town and, and uh, we'll just have a good service tonight. Thank the Lord. He just got back in town, I understand. Amen. All right, there you go. Praise the Lord. I'd like to thank the Lord for being here tonight, or this morning, not tonight, but thank the Lord for everything he's done for me, for everything he's going to do for me. You know, I was thinking as everybody's talking, and, you know, and Sister Paula was saying this world is just temporary. There's going to come a day where God's going to come back and, take his chosen away take the one that is called by his name and you know i was thinking it's like you know that there's we live by faith but it's like that seed that is planted in the ground if we just you know look at it and just say you know i believe that seed's going to do something and do nothing with it it's not going to grow you need to nurture it you need to water it you need to fertilize it you need to protect it from its elements you know, when a tree's growing up and it's but a sprout and a baby, sometimes you got to tie some ropes on it so the winds doesn't sway it to and fro and it fall over. It's a work, and we got to work toward that. You know, when God says, be ye holy for I am holy, we got to work toward that holiness. we got to work toward that perfection because God would not accept anything less. And, you know, thank God that we're working toward it. And, you know, one day he's going to reward us for that work. One day he's going to reward us and give us the treasures that we, that we have up in heaven. Not in this world, but up in heaven. I'm going to try this song. And, um, it's been a while since I sung it, but we're going to try it. face 
No more sorrow, no more pain, no more tears to wipe away. Well, to a place where the streets are golden, he'll open up the pearly gates. He's coming back to take me home with him. If we just fight the fight of faith, run the race of time, stand strong to the end. If Christ a solid rock will stand, then the day will finally come. Will he'll raise you above and he'll say to thee, enter in thy faithful one. I'm going to a place where I'll see my God in his glorious face. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more tears to wipe away. Well, to a place where the streets are golden, he'll open up the pearly gates. He's coming back to take me home with him. For my God's coming back. For yes, he's coming back. For my God's coming back to take me home with him. I'm going home to the place where I belong. I'm going home. It's hard to even think about a place that is so good as the Bible describes it. No more, I mean, we say it a lot, but how many really think about it? No more pain. Never. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever. No more pain. No more sickness. No more sorrow. I mean, that's everybody in here has felt pain. You felt sorrow, sickness. But there's a place where there is not going to be any more of that. Isn't that wonderful? That alone ought to encourage enough people. I think I'm going to change my life. I think I'm going to do the best I can. Amen. To serve the Lord. Anybody else want to take? Amen. Has everybody noticed Brother Jim's here? Amen. We're gonna. We'll probably hear quite a bit more out of him before the conference is over. But we're gonna ask him to come up and say something for us and sing. Amen. Brother Jim. Everybody say amen. Amen. When I look around and see the good things He does for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. But His blessings He freely gives, I owe my life to Him. I've got so much to thank Him for. I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. You see, He's been so good to me. of what he's done and where he's brought me from I've got so much to thank him for 
just a blink of an eye, it's all going to be over with. It's going to be behind us. Amen. And I thank the Lord for being at conference this year. How about you? Amen. Amen. I wanted to sing that song. I've got so much to thank Him for. And my voice won't cooperate, but I do got a lot to thank the Lord for today. Amen. Amen. See, friend, He's been good to me. Amen. You know, there's a, some that's not able to attend this year, and I miss... I miss different ones that's not able here. Uh, there's been some that's not been here in a couple years, and I really miss them not being here. And I understand things come up sometimes, amen, but uh, you still got to make an effort, amen. God will always make a way if you'll just make the effort, amen. But we're so thankful to be here today. Thank the Lord for what he's doing. He's doing great things, Brother Pete. I know he's still working in Dyersburg, even though you know things is... How many churches is down there now? 17, 18, just called by the Church of Jesus Christ alone, not counting uh, the other so-called Pentecostals and Apostolics and uh, what have you. Amen. But uh, I tell you, God's only got one church called by His name, like Brother Pete said a while ago. And I'm thankful to know the truth today. Amen. I'm thankful that God's still working. And I tell you, He can work here this morning. Amen. If we let Him. You know, uh, he'll work if you'll let him, amen. we got to get our minds conditioned sometimes, amen, to receive the things of God, amen. If you come uh, uh, expecting something, then God can fill your need to today. I wanted to say tonight, like the brother said a while ago, but we're not in a night service, we're in a day service, amen. And, but I'm glad to be here today. I'm excited about uh, conference this year. Amen. The first time that me and my wife came, I don't know if you, we was trying to count it up last night, six, seven years ago, we was excited to meet people of like faith. Amen. We'd been around some of them, and I'm sure some of you have been around some of the others that call themselves the Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been around some of them, even belong to some of their organizations, but I found out Amen. That uh, uh, it's like somebody was saying a while ago. Uh, a lot of people's gotten away from repentance. Amen. Brother Pete was on that subject a while ago. The Bible says, "Godly sorrow worketh repentance." Amen. I believe this. If you done your neighbor wrong, Amen. Or if you done your brother wrong, uh, you can ask God to forgive you. But I believe you need to go talk to your brother too. Amen. I believe you have to talk to him first, make things right with him, and then talk to God. But we got a lot of preachers today, and we got a lot of people, amen, they want to say, well, God, forgive me, but they don't want to go make things right, amen. And I was always taught, amen, that we've got to, if we're going to repent of our sins, we've got to go, if we, if we stole another man's wife, what in the world are you going to do, amen? You're going to have to go ask him to forgive you, and you're going to have to, you're going to, have to quit doing things the wrong way, amen, before you even approach God. Amen. But we got a lot of them in the ministry today. Amen. That's not qualified. Amen. I believe you have to have qualifications for the ministry. Amen. I, I believe a, a bishop must be the husband of one wife. Is that all right, bishop? Amen. I believe the ministry is the same way. I believe the elders, amen, should be the same way. Amen. We don't need to be, uh, uh, Scripture talks about men stealers. Amen. We're living in a day today when they have relationship. Men have relationship with men. But I tell you what, I still believe in the old-fashioned way. Amen. The Bible way. And it's a straight way. It's a narrow way. Amen. And God don't make it. He don't compromise. Men will compromise, but God don't compromise. Amen. It's written in the Word of God the way that we have to live and the way we have to present ourselves. Amen. And I still believe in good, godly living. The Bible said, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Amen. And I tell you, if you're listening, by the way, of you two today, and you're in one of those situations, amen, you need to repent. Amen. I tell you what, I found the Lord many years ago at an altar, and I still believe you have to go to find yourself an altar and repent of your sins. But there's a lot of people, amen, amen, they're not making things right with their neighbors, and they're, and they're surely not right with God. Amen. I, I was talking to an old preacher years ago, and uh, I'd been called on the carpet about some things, and uh, uh, somebody had told him that I didn't believe in speaking in tongues, so I had to ha go have a talk with him. And, I, and as I explained it to him, and he said, well, that's the same thing we teach in our church. And I said, I know it is. 
pastor, but I said some people will uh, uh, bring an accusation against you just to uh, uh, stir up problems. But uh, I tell you what, when we was talking, amen, uh, the old timers, they used, to, they used to believe in living right, not in church and out of church, in church, out of church. You was either in church or you wasn't, you wasn't, uh, you wasn't a Christian. Amen. Or a saint. Amen. I don't like to use the word Christian. Amen. But I'm glad for the Lord today. I don't want to ramble on, but I'm just thankful. And I hope you're excited about conference. Amen. I'm sure we're going to hear some good word before this thing's over with. Amen. And I don't believe there's any big eyes in the ministry tonight. And of all the ministry that here, there's not any of us any better than anybody else. But we're here to help one another, edify the church, and build the church up. But I tell you what, church, it's still going to take good godly living. Brother, the brother was talking about the, uh, the women and the dress. And the, and the same way with the men. Amen. I, don't, uh, you know, I know churches, they'll come down hard, so hard on the women, but yet they'll wear T-shirts and they'll wear pants so tight that you can see their features, and there's no difference. Holiness is still holiness. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God. Amen. See the Lord. Amen. And uh, I believe holiness on the inside and on the outside. Praise the Lord. But God is good. God's doing great things. Amen. We got some visitors that's coming this evening. I talked to them this morning and they was crossing, they were getting ready to cross the bridge there at Louisville. And uh, but we got some visitors from Georgia coming in this evening. Amen. And I'm, I'm hoping we've been, me and Brother Spence has been there, preached to them, and uh, hoping that they they can uh, glean something out of these services that bring them more into uh, the knowledge of the truth. Amen. They baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Have no problem with that. But the uh, Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Amen. Amen. And we're living in a generation today, Brother Pete. There's a lot of people who haven't heard what me and you have heard. Amen. So... Uh, we need preachers. Praise God. Do you love the Lord today? Would you stand to your feet and lift your hands up towards heaven? Amen. We've been dependent on the music and the songs. Let's lift, lift the name of the Lord up in praise tonight and worship. Amen. I, I tell you what, if we'll send the praises up tonight, he'll send, he'll send the blessings down. Amen. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for this, this congregation, Lord, this assembly of this church God bless today in the name of Jesus Christ I say amen. Amen. yes I think he's come from, I think we got some from Georgia tonight but we got some from Missouri coming in tonight I think West Virginia uh, and maybe a couple more I don't know for sure you know but we got some that'll be here and of course most of the church will be here and then of course we do have some downstairs cooking us something to eat for later so uh, I always said on the first day and first services it's uh, good to know each other and you haven't seen in a while but we do appreciate all of you that are here early we thank God for you for each and every one of you amen anybody else want to testify all right brother Tyler can you sing for us Appreciate Brother Tyler. Brother Pete ran him out of Tennessee, so he come up here. <laughs> I might run him out and send him back to Tennessee. I don't know yet, but no, we appreciate Brother Tyler. He's doing real good, and uh, he's doing fine. He's even looking pretty sharp this morning. Amen. All right, Brother Tyler. There's a light in the window at the table set in splendor. And one standing by the open door. I can see a crystal river. Oh, it must be near forever. And I've never been this homesick before. Well, see the bright light. 
just about home time And I can't see my father standing at the door In this world's been a wilderness And I'm ready for deliverance The oh Lord, I've never been this homesick before And I can't see the family Gather, sweet faces all familiar. No one's old or feeble anymore. Oh, this lonesome heart is crying. Think I'll spread my wings for flying. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. We'll see the bright light shine just about home time and I can't see my father standing at the door in this world in a way song brother Darrell sung and appreciate him his wife two kids being here they've been coming this past year some of you probably don't you might remember him but, uh, yeah how can you forget him yeah there you go but uh, we're glad that him and his family's here with us and we thank the Lord for them can you say amen now we'll probably hear from brother Glenn later this is brother Glenn from Indiana this is not the brother Glenn from Ohio that you know so we're going to ask him to just come up and sing for us, and we might hear from him. He's a good preacher, too. Come on up, Brother Glenn. Brother Glenn Quillen. Appreciate him. Last year, been coming, being with us. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. We love the Lord this morning. Thank you for the goodness and mercy of Jesus Christ. As the psalmist says, they're fresh every morning, the mercies of the Lord. I'm thankful that I know who Jesus Christ is. Thankful that I know that he came and walked amongst us. He became like one of us. He suffered just like you and I did. And he gave his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I'm thankful to know that you know you look into the lineage of Jesus Christ. And you find four women in his lineage. Two were Gentiles and two were Jews. Three of the women were not pure women. One was a harlot. Two were adulterers, and one was pure. You know, he came from an imperfect generation or a lineage, and he made it perfect. It's the same thing he can do with you and I. We were imperfect, but by him, we can become perfect. And I love him this morning. Thank you for the goodness and mercy of him. Once I walked in the path of sin And I called the world my friend But no peace or contentment could be found Then I met a man one day Who took my guilt and sin away He picked me up when the world let me down he picked me up when the world let me down. When things get rough, he puts my feet on higher ground. Now I'm walking in the heavenly way. Since Jesus turned my night to day, he picked me up when the world let me down. 
Satan will try to blind your eyes. He'll make you think that you're satisfied. But in chains of sin and shame, he's got you bound. But I know one who can set you free. Talk about Jesus, he did it for me. He picked me up when the world let me down. He picked me up when the world let me down. When things get rough, he puts my feet on higher ground. Now I'm walking in the heavenly way. Since Jesus turned my night to day, he picked me up when the world let me down. He picked me up when the world let me down. Praise the Lord. That's amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise him. I'm going to have my son come up and give us a song. We'll probably hear some more out of these preachers during the next day or two, but this morning we're kind of just filling everybody in. The food's not going to be ready till a little after 12, so uh, we're in no big hurry. Can you say amen? amen? Nobody here is hungry anyhow. Nobody here likes to eat, except for Jim. Amen. Brother hey, Jerry. You can testify and give us a song. Everybody say amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here this morning. Yes, it is. Um, you know, I was sitting thinking and listening to those that have been up here. And uh, just made me think, you know, people have to make or try to make serving God difficult. And, you know, God never intended for it to be difficult. Amen. You know, I, and I, while I was sitting there and I was thinking, I said, you know what, three easy things, if people could just keep that in your brain. Number one, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. People forget, these are things people don't think about or they forget. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that tells me that what you needed to be saved back then, you're going to need to be, do that to be saved today. And the other, the second thing I was thinking about, God is no respecter of person. What I have to do, Brother Pete has to do to be saved. That's it. Amen. And third, which a lot of people it seems like don't have today, is common sense. <laughs> we laugh, but it's so true. I mean, things that are just as obvious as having two hands, people oblivious to common sense you know people would actually think about if things were right or wrong just think about it you know there's there's people that have never been to church a day in their life and know certain things are right or wrong amen but God is the same yesterday today and forever he's no respecter of person and have some common sense you know, and if you could do those three things, God will lead you in the right direction if you truly want the truth, if you really want to be right. Amen. I'm not, I might not have the most common sense, but I have enough common sense to know that his name is Jesus Christ, that he's the one that died for me. Amen. And I have to be baptized in that name and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, like the Bible says. Because he is no respect for a person. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's the same. I haven't sang this in a while, but since there's not a lot of people here, I won't be mad at myself if I mess up, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm tired and so weary but I must travel on till the Lord comes and calls, calls me away. Oh, yes, where the morning is bright and the lamb is the light, 
and the night is as fair as the day oh yeah there will be peace in the valley for me someday there will be peace in the valley for me oh lord i pray there'll be no sadness no sorrow no troubles troubles i'll see there will be peace peace in the valley for me there the flowers will be blooming and the grass will be green and the skies will be clear and serene oh yes where the sun forever shines giving one endless beam and the clouds there will ever be seen oh yes there will be peace in the valley for me someday there will be peace in the valley for me oh lord i pray there'll be no sadness no sorrow no trouble trouble i'll see there will be peace peace in the valley for me there the bear will be gentle and the wolf will be tame and the lion shall lay down by the lamb oh yes and the beast of the wild shall be led by a little child and i'll be changed change from this creature that i am oh yes there will be peace in the valley for me someday there will be peace in the valley for me oh lord i pray there'll be no sadness no sorrow no trouble troubles i'll see there will be peace peace in the valley for me I hadn't heard that in a while. I like that. It's going to be peace. Peace. <laughs> you know, there's. I was thinking as he was ending that. There's so many people today that's. They're just not at peace. What a place that's going to be. People would just stir themselves up, wake up, and realize. This is not going to last forever. Look at America. Look where America has gone in just the last few years. Look how far down. Look how far away from the scriptures that it's getting, especially in the last few years here. God's not going to let that continue forever. He's going to step in. His prophecy is being fulfilled. Things are going to happen. Whether you want to believe it or not, or the world. Some people just living in a, in a, in a dream world, I think. 
the fantasy world. They're mixed up. They're messed up. Earlier I was going to say after one of the songs, one of the problems we have today among many people today just simply don't know the word. They just don't know the word of God. They don't know what is written. All they know is what they've been taught by some organization, denomination, family tradition. That's what they're trying to live by. And all the time, the Bible tells us that's not going to work. We talk about the name, the name of the church. Well, I believe 110% that God's name should be on the building we worship. I believe that. We have it. It's, it's always been called through the Bible. It was called by his name. But then on the other hand, there's a lot of places that got the name on the building, but they don't have him in the pulpit or on the pulpit. The name on the building itself is not going to save you. It's got to be in here. If I get to teach or preach, uh, and I'm not sure yet what I'm going to, uh, some of the things that I'm going to use, but Bishop Lee, I was telling Brother Jim, we was talking about different things, and Bishop Lee used to tell us a lot of times, you can go to the store and you can, you can buy you a can of green beans, a can of corn, amen, and you can tell them the green beans is green beans. The corn's the corn. But if you open up that can of green beans and it's corn, you're going to say, somebody deceived me. <laughs> that was false advertisement. And that's what's going on out there in the world today. There's a lot of false advertising. They want to claim to be the church of Jesus Christ, but they don't want to preach like the church of Jesus Christ. They just want to have a good time. Loud music. Running around the church. That's right, brother. That's false advertisement. They're lying to the people. Then you got people running around in there that's not living right. They got them preaching and singing and playing music and that doesn't make it the church of Jesus Christ. You can put the church of Jesus Christ on all four sides of this building. That don't mean we're right. He has to be in here. He has to be in here. Amen. My, my. I was going to have some of them younger ones sing, but uh, they took off on me. I guess they're thinking, well, the cooks downstairs needed them uh, because they're getting ready for our dinner. But maybe they didn't hear me earlier when I said nobody's hungry up here anyhow. So there's no sense of being in a hurry, right? How many of you, uh, you uh, all got a song for us? Come on up. I was going to ask Brother, Brother Clarence if he was able to sing this morning. He took off on us. Huh? Oh, here she is over here. Yeah. Well, we've got plenty of time. I don't think the, I don't think the supper, dinner, whatever you want to call it, I don't think it's going to be ready till almost a quarter after 12. So you might have to hear me for a while. Amen. Sister Zoe, maybe you can get a song for her, son. the stars one and all he knows how much sand is on the shores sees every sparrow that falls he made the mountains and the seas he's in control of everything of all creatures great and Every step that I take Tomorrow may bring can 
question. Does he know your name? <laughs> Amen? I believe the Bible teaches, Brother Glenn, that when we repent, truly repent, and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that we put on his name. And when you put on his name, he knows you. I believe he's going to give us a new name. The Bible says he's going to give us a new name one day, too. I don't know what that's going to be, but I'm looking forward. Can you say Amen? And there's so many good things in the Bible if people would just get their mind off of everything. Well, let's just... Brother John Leslie been hid back there running the camera and different things. So we're going to ask him to come up and uh, take a few minutes and say something for us. Can you say amen? amen. Let's all welcome him with an amen. Thank you. Brother John. There he is. You ready? <laughs> Uh, all right. Now, we can't guarantee what's going to come out of his mouth, but here's John Leslie. I like to kid around a little bit sometimes. I tell people all the time, a merry heart do it good like a medicine. People want to sit around with a frown on their face over in the corner somewhere and don't want to talk. Uh, that ain't good. A merry heart, do it good like a medicine. Amen. Amen. It, it releases things when you laugh, and especially, I've looked into this, studied on this a little bit. I'm not a doctor, but uh, the harder you laugh, the more endorphins they release, and you feel better. Maybe that's why I consider myself a happy man. And I am. I've got problems. Everything's not perfect around, but I'm a happy man. I used to tell people a lot, if you ever want to see a happy man, come and look me up. I'm happy. Because I know who Jesus Christ is. I'm in the church. Got the Holy Ghost. Know what the truth is. If that don't make you happy, friend, nothing will. People need to wake up, smile a little bit, get their minds off of their troubles. There's more in this world than you and your troubles. Look around. Look what God has done for us. How he's blessed us. Amen. Amen. Look at the promises that we've got coming our way. Look at that place God got called it heaven. And all we got to do is, is just stay right with him. Amen. Look to the good things. Amen. Brother John, bless him. I just want to say I thank the Lord for being here. Thank God for being able to be in another convocation. And thank God for all the years I've been coming to him. And, you know, I, like we said back when everybody was talking earlier, it seems like we used to have to sit out chairs in the middle aisle. And like Brother Pete was talking, if you didn't get here early, you didn't have a seat. And uh, so we, we ministers up here would be sitting up there. And we, I remember having to sit on the front row to give some of the other pastors to be able to sit up here, you know. But, but things have changed in this time that we're living in. And, and you look around the world today and, and you see the attack that's coming on. And they, they are doing everything in their possibility to try to destroy this world. And Brother Jared, he mentioned just a couple minutes ago, he talked about how that, he says, just common sense. And I think I heard, even way back there, I heard someone say, common sense isn't common anymore. And it's not, truly it's not. And I was thinking this morning as I was, uh, got up this morning, I was thinking, you know how that even simple things, 
things that we were taught in the, as a, in the elementary, think, simple things, like what a man and a woman is. Somehow or another, we have a judge on the Supreme Court that couldn't define what a woman was, and she happened to be one. And she turned and said, well, I'm not a biologist. Well, I'm not a biologist either, but I can tell you what a man and a woman is. It's been around for thousands of years. I don't know what's wrong with it, but we're living in a time that they're trying to destroy this world. They're trying to go after morality. They're trying to, that which is right. They're saying it's evil. The Bible speaks of this. That which is good is now bad. And everywhere you turn, they're trying to destroy it. The church, in our, you think you're going to get away from this. We're looking at a time that's coming. It's really going to get bad pretty quick. And we, I've talked many times about having faith in God and stuff like that. And you're going to have to lean on him even more than you've ever had before. And you say, well, I'll wait till the, I start seeing the tanks coming down the downtown portage, and I'll start worry about God then. No, it would be too late if you're going to worry about that. Because it doesn't take much to destroy this world now. That's, they call about, I remember watching the news, and, and they were talking about suitcase nuclear bombs, and dirty bombs, they call them. They can carry in around in a suitcase. They can destroy so much. But so many people today, are, they're waiting for the big sign. Well, the signs are everywhere. You just don't have to know what to look for. Signs are everywhere. Are you just looking for them? The time of God's coming back. We've talked about it many times. Many ministers and pastors and preachers have preached on at times. And they sit back, and I've heard, I've heard of a different evangelists out there. And I, I, this is no joke. I've said this before many times. But I've got at my house a bunch of books. And in those books, I've got, I don't know, dozens about end-time prophecies. And every time I get into this, I'm mean, church knows this, but every time I get into those and try to search them, this is no joke. I get physically sick to my stomach. I'll get so sick and I just go, it just drives me crazy because I believe if you're going to find out anything about the end times, it's going to come from the church of Jesus Christ. If they can't tell me who God is and what his name is, they cannot tell me what's going to happen in the future. And so many people are relying on the commentaries, are relying on all these other things, and they're not relying on God. They're not relying on His Word. No, I may not know all the answers. I may not understand it all. But you know what? I thank God I know what He has shown me. I thank and understand. You know what? He has to let me learn a little. He, has to, he can't just throw it at me all at once. But I thank God if it's going to be a revelation of what God comes back, if they don't have the revelation of Jesus Christ, they're not going to have the revelations of revelations. I remember preaching one time and going to the prison, and Brother Jade got me, got us caught up in that, and and uh, we went there. And I remember one time, and I said, I said, how many people know what the first revelation that's found in the Book of Revelations? And people kind of looked at me, kind of funny, like, and they're looking at me. What do you mean? What's the very first revelation that is revealed in the Book of Revelations? Revelations one, verse one, <laughs> the revelation of Jesus Christ. How, is, how can that be so hard for this world to understand? It's very claimed right there in front of you. Open your Bible and read it for yourself. Oh, no, I've got to come up with this 30-year Bible study and come up with this. And I, I sat back and I heard a, a man named, uh, I forgot his name now, but I thought of he's a, I used to have his, some of his tapes years ago, 30 years ago or something like that. And he was talking about all this, God was coming back then. I sat back and I go, all his theories and all his ideas about when God was coming back was all wrong. The Bible's very clear then. He is a false prophet. A false prophet. We need to start marking him as a, such. False mark prophet. This is a false prophet. But yet so many people say, well, he might have got it wrong, but he might be right on this one. Well, you know, they always say a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, you know what? It's, it'll happen. They'll, they'll come up sometimes to figure it out. But you know what? they don't have the revelation of Jesus Christ, they're not going to have it. And I thank God that I do have the revelation of his name. And many people sit back and they, 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 they neglect that. But yet, I, I say oftentimes, if you stub your toe, go out to work, they know the name of Jesus Christ like that. But they have no problem saying it. But ask them, ask them who God is, they have no idea. Well, his name is God. It might be Jesus. It might be Father. It might be Son. They have no idea that his name is Jesus Christ until they've decided to use it in a slur. I remember Brother Randy was at that time, and I said, you know what, if you have to say a word or say somebody's name, I said, use Brother Randy Wardarski's name. I said, he, he doesn't mind. It won't do you any harm to say his name in vain. But you use the name of Jesus Christ in vain, and you're going to be in trouble. And you know what, so many people, they're trying to destroy this religion, trying to destroy our children. 
if you're not fighting for right and the morality, and you're not praying, and you're not fasting, and you're not getting ready for this, you're going to be in trouble. Get ready now. Now's the time to be prepared. Now's the time to study. Now's the time to work. I used to, I used to run, believe it or not, and uh, I used to be uh, cross country. I tried that one year, and you know, I, one of the things that he'd run at three miles, and I, I know some of these sisters, Zoe, she runs, I don't know, get grief, 15 miles or 13 miles, I, I'd die. But you know what? I ran the three mile, and when I ever get done, the last mile, I always ran and sprint. I was a sprinter more than anything. I would, I would last handle, I'd be able to jog the first two, but then the last mile, I would sprint it out. And I would be able to pass a lot of people because at the last mile, they're dying out. They, wasn't, they, they had gassed themselves out at the beginning. They never knew how to finish the race. Well, I'm just the opposite. I knew how to finish the race. I just didn't know how to start it. But I thank God he taught me how to finish the race. He taught me how now is the time we run harder. Now is the time we go even faster. Now is the time we work harder. We pray harder. Now is the time we use our faith more. Because now I can see the finish line. I know where it is. I know on the other side what's going to be ready for me on the other side. I thank God now is the time to run even harder. Don't go, don't slack off now. Now's the time to push a little harder. They used to say, well, once you get across the finish line, you can die on the other side. Just get across the finish line. Well, that's all I'm trying to do is get across the finish line. And we've got just a short time. We've heard that, well, it's, we've heard that so long. Well, this, I don't know, but it's just a very short time. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but Brother Troy always says, I know who holds tomorrow. And I thank God for that, Bishop Spence. He was talking about how it's amazing people can't figure out Revelation 1 and 1. <laughs> and I, as soon as he said that, I thought, there's a scripture I cannot figure out why people can't see that or understand that. And I mention it about everywhere I go. And we're supposed to be an educated generation, intelligent. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says that this is his commandment, that we believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he's given us command. Why can't people figure? Th it's written. Jesus' name is not written. The name of Jesus is not written. But the commandment, it's written in the Bible, the commandment that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. If that's the commandment, what part of that don't they understand? Amen. Amen. Amen? But they're going to answer one day to a God, amen, that tried to show them, was told, it was told to them, and they rejected it. Going to be a lot of people. Do you have that song, Sister Zoe? you have a song? Okay. Give me one more minute. There's going to be a lot of people one day Trust me, there's going to be so many people one day that's going to regret. They're going to regret ignoring what they've been told. A lot of people are kind of concerned about, well, to them that didn't know. Well, there's not too many out there today that don't know. They've been told. Amen. But they rejected it. And they refused to repent. They refused to change it, and they went on. Well, one day they're going to meet this Jesus Christ. I said, one day they're going to meet Jesus Christ. Never thought about it before. They're not going to meet Jesus' name. They're going to meet Jesus Christ. They'll realize one day his name is Christ. I've had them, just bear with me, I've had preachers been preaching for years. Look me right in the face and tell me. And they're supposed to be oneness preachers. They looked me right in the eye and said that they don't believe Christ is part of his name. They, they put articles on things, write little tracts. Well, if Christ is not part of his name, why did 1 John 3.23 say that this is his commandment? that we believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Then why, did, if that's true, why didn't the Bible just say this is his commandment, 
that we believe in the name of his son Jesus and love one another. They're wrong. I think a lot of them know they're wrong, but they're too stubborn to change it. Now, I could get into that, but we won't. Praise the Lord. Sister Zoe, bless her heart. Come on up. And then after this, we'll try and get dismissed. <coughs> enjoyed that song. I really like that. God's got everything under control. Sometimes growing up I used to hear the expression worry wart. They call people worry wart. In fact my mother, bless her heart, uh, we used to tease her a little bit. Mom you're, you're a worry wart. Well what does that mean? Well they worry about everything. Amen. If they ain't nothing to worry about they'll find something. We call them worry warts. Well we're living in a world today, church. They worry about this. They worry about that. But really, God's got everything under control. And we can once really get that in our mind and in our heart, that, wait a minute, I know everything's looking bad. This is terrible. That's terrible. This ain't going right. But God's got everything under control. It's good for his people. And whatever happens in the world, I don't think anything is going to happen in this world unless God approves it, or okays it, or even caused it. So quit worrying, and just worship the Lord. 
Come unto me, he said, all you that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. How many would like to have rest in your soul? Well, he said, come unto me. Come unto me, Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew. All you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Too many people are learning things of the world, learning this. He said, learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So get, get rid of all them burdens and trust the Lord. That's what he told us to do. I keep referring back to what we've been teaching on the last little bit. It's written. It is written. And I got a few responses on that one. And I'm glad. I want people to wake up and realize if it's not written, friend, don't worry about it. If it ain't written, don't preach it. Don't teach it. Amen? But if you can find it written there in the Bible, you can put your faith in that. All right, we're going to go ahead and dismiss.